Hi guys, Charlie from Monocure 3D. Today we're going to check out this printer. It's a Flashforge Photo 8.9. Let's get straight into it. Okay guys, moment of truth. I've got the trusty Stanley knife here. Let's open up this box and see what we've got. So we've got the box of goodies sitting at the top there. We'll get that out. Carefully get it out like this. I always like to check to make sure there's nothing in the box. Sometimes they can put build plates or instructions and things in there, but it doesn't look like there's anything in there. Solid printer. It says uh, 15 kilos on the box and it feels definitely 15 kilos, which is way heavier than our other printers this size that we've uh, reviewed on the channel. So full plastic wrap over the top. Nice white base. Looks to be um, plastic, but painted actually. It might be aluminium, I think, and it's potentially powder coated aluminium. It's got this tape all the way around the outside to hold the lid on, so we better undo that. Everyone loves watching the tape come off, I know. Not so much the sound that it makes. They've also included this um, plastic wrap just over the lid, which is a good way to protect it. Flash forwards, you missed out on a handle there again. Everyone knows that's a bugbear of mine. Uh, <laughs> and you're sick of probably hearing me say it. Some tape on the back, that was just on the back of this Z wrap. And to be honest, that Z axis there looks quite solid and yet feels very solid as well. So spin the printer back around. Foam in here, okay, so the bill plate was hidden in the foam there. Okay, that's... That's a bit of a disappointment. I never liked seeing that, and I'm actually really surprised that Flashforge has gone down that path to have these divots for the, the bottom of the screws uh, holes in, in the bottom of the vat. I just don't understand why that's necessary. And to be honest, it's just annoying. You know, if you want to print anything flat, you essentially can't, the resin gets trapped in there. So you either have to avoid that area or fill them in with something is the other way to do it and just smooth them off. Um, but it's a solid, a very, very solid aluminium look, good thickness of it here, nice tapering, nice smooth tapering, I haven't seen that before, it's a nice rounded edge there, which is really nice. And it's got this sort of finish on, it's like a hammer tone finish, I'd say that'll be really good for the models to grip to. The first thing that really stands out is this dual Z rail here, this Z axis, those rails are super solid, really beefy supports here around the rails and probably the, the beefiest I've seen, a nice lead screw, a lot of screws here holding all this together and a really solid, really, really solid build plate holder here off the Z, that's, that's super solid, I haven't seen one that solid for a long time. That's great to see and a nice, obviously a little dust cover at the top there, just keeps dust and things off that lead screw. See a little bit of uh, lithium grease on the worm drive there that sort of goes away after you go up and down a few times but uh, make sure you, you, know, you keep that lubricator with some more lithium grease if it dries out. So let's have a look what they've done here, anything interesting with this vat. If you've seen my videos before you know that I'm not a massive fan of these coming right out. The advantage of coming right out is that you can clear them You know, if you ever want to wash the, the vat. I know I do, I'll, I'll put this whole vat in the ultrasonic cleaner in resin away to clean it. But the disadvantage is you can very easily lose them. This a little protective film in here on top of the FEP sheet, which is always good to see. That's pretty commonplace these days. But again, this, this vat, very, very solid aluminium. It's got these protruding uh, hex head screws here and they're, they're actually to sit in here so you can see that that they act as a place for the vat to, to lock into place, which is quite a nice way of doing it. Apart from that, it's pretty standard. It's got some little handles here, which is kind of handy, but a, a very solid, solid vat there. I heard someone the other day say, we're buying a new vat for their printer. And I said, why are you buying a new vat? And they said, oh, because the FEP's worn out. And um, I said, you know, you can just replace the FEP. And they went, oh, really? So yeah, you can replace the FEP, if you didn't know. Just having a quick look around the printer. It's got a little bit of a green tab there and a peel off. Relatively small screen to be honest, I would have thought that they would have gone with something slightly bigger. I'm um, just having a look at the bottom while we're here. Looks like two pretty serious fans down there and some feet and just your standard aluminium base there. All in all, it's a pretty nice looking printer. There is a protective film on here and that one will need to come off too before you start printing. So have a look here, the accessories kit. Let's see what you get. First thing I've pulled out, let's just go with that first. It's a very flash little USB drive. Some paper filters always come in handy. This will be the instruction 
manual and the quick start guide. Yeah, look, it's a pretty straightforward guide. It's showing us how to level the build plate, which we'll do soon. And then it's gonna tell you how to home it and print with it and all that. But we'll go through all that, this as well. So after sales service, that's good to see. Just a pair of gloves there, which are handy, some tools as normal. Chunky power adapter says there that it's 24 volts. It's always good to see. I bought this direct from Flashforge. It came, I believe, from Australian warehouse. It came with an Australian plug. That's always good to see, no, no converter or anything. And standard now, you've got your tapered paint scraper. Great for removing the prints off the build plate. And Flashforge has got their very own, which is quite nice to see, with a logo on it their very own spatula for the vat. Uh, in the vat, if you ever have a failed print and it's stuck, this is the one you use and you never use the other one. Um, and also for mixing the resin around, these are good. The, this is the only thing you should put in the vat and never use the metal one because it could puncture it and then you'll be contacting us to get some new FEPs. I think that's a pretty standard basic kit and it's all you really need. Interestingly though, unless I've missed it, um, doesn't seem like they're giving you a spare FEP. So yeah, the fact that they haven't given you a spare FEP, you do need to be a bit aware of that. So yeah, let's um, get the plastic off this lid. To cut out the UV light, Flash Forge have used this dark tinted, like sunglasses essentially. It doesn't mean that you can really see a lot inside the box with it on. From a distance, it's a little bit easier, but up close, it is quite hard to see. So now we just plug this into here. To be honest, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of AC adapters. I prefer if I can just plug straight into the printer. I know a lot of them now go with this. I just find that this is another thing you need to find space for on, you know, a lot of the time limited bench space. So let's just put the vat back in place and that should just slot in, as I said before into those holes. There you go. I'm just going to flip this around just to show you where I put that power in. Power goes into here and then the power button is at the back here. Most people will put the printer up against the wall and you can't see that so it is hard to find where to turn that on. And they have put a network connection around here and that's great on the side but below it is the USB port. I'm not a huge fan of having the USB port all the right way around here. I think that should be more accessible on the front. You get a good shot of that there. We can go through the settings. So that's just the information service and all the rest of it on the system settings. Tools, so this will be your manual up and down and home. So the number here on the side is 289 at the moment. Now if we press up, it goes to 291, 293. That's showing you where on the Z axis is. Now I can just hold that down and then I've got to let it go again. It does climb up, but when I, once I let it go, it goes up. It, it's uh, an interesting way I've never seen this done. This is very, very fine, this 46 here. So let's see, so it's stopped there. So if I go to this one now and I go up, we can just see it's moving a tiny amount. So just point, so that'd be um, 10 micron up and down, okay? So yeah, very, very fine. So like every build plate we do, we slide it in here. We make sure it's clear of debris. We make sure that this is nice in nice and tight. We make sure there's nothing in the vat. We get our tool bag, undo these on both sides, get them nice and loose. They do have a split washer in here, um, which makes it harder to undo, but it does mean that they won't loosen as easily, which is quite a good thing. Yeah, that's loose enough now. So now if I hit the home button, that should take it down to what the printer determines home. And that's using this IR sensor on the side here. So when this bar cuts that, that's gonna be its home. Being able to have a bar like that means that if you were to put anything on the build plate, such as a magnetic flex plate or anything like that, you could essentially um, move that uh, and change it if you needed to. So that's settled there now. And we can see that the uh, build plate is nice and square, it's flat and it's down. So as always, we just tighten these by holding, if you can, just a couple of fingers either side. I normally try and do opposite diagonally to make sure that we are keeping it nice and even as we tighten it. And I don't always tighten it as tight as it can go at this point. I tighten it to sort of finger tight, I guess, and then I'll come through and give it a slightly stronger twist on each one that's it so I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy with that so to get this back up i'm going to hold that down until we get to let's say around the 200 mark it seems to be going quite high now at 210 and i'm pretty positive we were nowhere near 
210, we were way higher than 210 last time. So let's see what this does. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I'll just go through the other options on this screen. Now we've done that. Lighting up the screen, press and hold. So I guess, okay, so pressing and holding is just gonna do a full light of the screen. And then if you let it go, and again, that's slightly different to the way that other printers work, but it's always good to have new ways of doing things. I don't mind that. It means you can expose it for as long as or as little as you want. Uh, most of them do have a timer. So you could use that for the cleaning or just checking to make sure that everything's okay. So the print menu, we've got USB there and looks like it's got some internal memory as well, but we'll get into that when we start putting the prints on. So let's get the, the little USB stick that came with it and plug it in and just see what it came with. It doesn't look like at that level there's anything and there's nothing in there. So there's no test prints by the looks of it, even on the USB stick. In the internal memory, there's nothing either. So we're gonna to have to load a print onto this. So let's get the laptop out and put one of our calibration models on this. Okay guys, so I tried to use Chi2Box to start with. I couldn't actually end up seeing it on the printer. The file just wasn't um, appearing. I followed their instructions. I ended up changing the file type to .svgx. The print actually appeared, I got very excited. And then when I um, clicked on it, it said there was an error with the file. So I've now downloaded a flash print, which is their or I should say Flash DL print, which is their version. And I'm just about to upload the calibration model into here. So let's open that and see what it does. Okay, so it's put it right sort of on the edge, which is kind of annoying. So I'm gonna move it to around the middle. Now I don't wanna scale this or anything or rotate it. I just wanna print it flat on the bill plate. And so around in the middle there, I'm sure there's a way of, there you go, uh, center. So that will center it. You have a look at the top view bottom view, left view, right view, front view, back view, that's all pretty interesting. You just stand and move uh, parameters there. Uh, you can set the rotation there. You can surface to the platform, so that's when you tick that, and then you tick the surface you wanna go straight down. And if you wanna change the scaling of it, you do it there. Set cut to a plane, not sure what this does. Looks like you can slice uh, the file in half if if you want to, but we don't want to do that. So let's print this, obviously the support settings are up here, we don't need to do that. So let's go to the print settings. So now it's um, asking us what material type. Now we want a custom material, so we're gonna to go to more options, and this is where we should be able to change things. So base time, five seconds, attach time, 120 seconds, gradual layer times, okay. So now we need to work out what they mean um, by these different settings. So to me, base time and attach time are the same thing. I think that that might be a tra problem with translation, and I'm thinking that attach time is the base time, is, is the, because this was set to 120 seconds, and that base time must be normal time. So sometimes like, uh, bottom layers are called base layers, so the base time, I think they mean normal layers. So Flash Forge, if you're trying to make this easy, uh, for people, um, you need to use the right terminology. Um, and base and attach time is not the right terminology. So the normal layer time, we're gonna go with two seconds. Um, I'll put the zero in there because it had it. And the attach time will not be 120 seconds. That will be 20 seconds with a zero as well. Gradual layers, that would be transition layers. So we can leave that at eight. Raft. We're gonna disable it, we don't want a raft. We don't wanna adjust the size and we don't want to change the fill density and we don't want a hollow. So we'll leave all that there. In fill, we don't need any of that. You can see up here is a layer height. So you can adjust that with these arrows or we'll just leave that at 0 0.05. So that's 50 microns. And we let's hit save as new and we'll call this Monocure 3D. If this was connected to the network, you might be able to print directly from here, but we're gonna to go to the USB. So I'll hit save configuration, and we'll see what we get. Okay, it's saved it. Okay, here we go. So I had to hit okay, and now I've come in here, and we wanna to go to the USB, which is no name, and it's saying we wanna save it as an SVGX, okay? And we'll call it V3, not to get confused with my other one. Okay, so it's telling you up there, estimated print time is 15 minutes. It's gonna use 6.19 millilitres of material. 
So that should be ready to go. Now if we take that out and we pop it in the side here and we come back to here and we hit print and we keep our fingers crossed. So there it is there, Charlie's V3. So it gives you a picture which is good, it's showing me a bit of information about it, how long it's going to take and the layer height and the transition layers is there as well. That's that eight there. Next thing to do is to get some resin. Okay, so let's find the resin. I said glowing grape. So this is one of our tough urethane bases. So this is the same base that goes in our tough resin and our pro resin. Starting at the two second layer time will be a good place to start. Look at that color. If we come back here and we hit this button here that says play, it's all firing up, so the fans have kicked in now. I'm double checking to make sure that everything is on, on nice and tight, and we're gonna let it do its thing. Okay guys, time for the specifications. So we've got a layer thickness of 0.025 to 0.2, so that's 25 microns to 200 microns. It's interesting, it doesn't go to 10 like most of them. Print volume, 192 by 120 by 200 millimeters. Precision plus minus 0.05 millimeter. Print speed 10 to 50 millimeters an hour. Printed dimensions 280 by 240 by 465. The touch screen is a 3.5 inch. It's too small in my opinion. The net weight is 12.5 kilos and the gross weight is 15. Connectivity was USB. Software, flash DLP print, which we discovered the hard way, and the file output format is SVGX. Okay guys, there you go. The glowing grape is finished, it's risen up. Good practice to get into. You can pop the four tray underneath thing and then it stops it dripping everywhere. You can see the model has stuck there nicely. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this off. Now that first one there, I can tell you straight away, that is that fin there is 0.2 of a mil, and that's 0.5, and then we've got one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three. Then we can check the accuracy of those, and then the idea with this is that we're able to slide this into this space and see if it sits flat. Now because we've taken the bottom layers out of the factor because it doesn't go as deep as this, it should give us a good indication whether we're under or over cured. Now to me, by looking at that not sitting straight in there, I'd say we're slightly over cured. So we'd have to reduce the times down, which doesn't surprise me, down to say 1.8 and we could dial that in. So we'll get on to doing that. Now have a look at that in the bottom. You can see, even though I haven't cleaned it, can you see those little knob, those little spots there? That's those screw holes that I was complaining about right here. And that's why I don't like them. So this one here should be one. And it looks like, as you can see, it is a little bit beyond one on that manual scale there. So I'm thinking we are slightly over cured. So we'll have a look at this one here, which should be two. And again, slightly over. So a uh, good indication. We'll refine this uh, calibration model and we'll put instructions up on the website on how to use it properly. So there you have it guys, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.